Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up the eSky simulator on a XP computer. Okay, got your transmitter. Go ahead and make sure you got it plugged in. If you plug it in for the first time, you'll get a little icon that will pop up at the bottom of your screen telling you it found a USB device. Uh, put the CD in. If it doesn't pop up with a little window, go to My Computer and you'll see it. A little icon for it. Double click on it. It'll read the disk. And it'll come up with a couple different things. You want to go to FMS Setup. And it's going to ask you if you want English or German. And if you're listening to me, you want English. Just click I agree with terms and condition. Next. Uh, if you want to change where it's going to install to, this is where you do it, but most people just click next. It's going to install the program. The faster your computer is, the faster it'll do it. If you got a slow computer, it may take a while. And it's going to come up with the, tell you that it's all done, and it's going to ask you if you want to launch the program now. And I do, so I'm just going to click finish. Okay, it brings up a little screen with an airplane. You can just go ahead and drag the screen out, enlarge it. First thing you got to do, so go ahead and make sure we're going to cal uh, calibrate your controls. So go to up at the top, go to controls, go to analog control, and it's going to bring up a little menu. And you want to click on joystick interface and click mapping slash calibration. All right, it's going to bring up a little menu. And what you're going to want to do is take your little transmitter here, put everything in the middle, all your trim tabs, and the throttle stick. Make sure that's right in the middle. And there we go. Then click on calibrate. Now what you want to do is move the sticks all around the circles. All right, and then put the throttle stick back in the center. And click next. And now you are done. Just click finish. So now your transmitter is calibrated. So now we got to change a couple of the settings uh, to make sure that we get all the correct functions for our helicopter. So I want this to be my throttle. So this is, as you see, see the slider moving up and down. So what we're going to do is over here on the side, go down to throttle and I'm going to change that number to what the slider that's moving is which is number three okay and then I'm also going to go down to the bottom where it says pitch because that's also the pitch so I'm also going to change that to three okay and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to check the other ones my rudder channel four change that up the top and then also the tail change that to number four got aileron left and right it's channel one uh, change that channel one and then roll that's what that is channel one and then your elevator it's the only one that's left and that's already set channel two channel two so my settings are four two one three four two one three um, now I know for this you got to uh, make them all backwards. So just click on the IN invert tabs for all of them. Okay, and then click OK. Now click OK again. Scale back out. Okay, we're going to go ahead, and since we're going to want to practice for helicopters, go up to the top, click on Model, Load. It'll bring up a little menu. Uh, you can go online to their website and download additional models, but uh, for the ones here, I'm going to click on 3D. This is a collective pitch helicopter, so it's going to be in stunt mode, meaning you're going to want to have the throttle stick in the middle. Click open. You'll see it come up on the screen. And again, I, I know the controls are the right ones. I think so. <laughs> and...
it's not too bad. You know, practice on what you need to practice on. If you need to practice on hovering, practice on that. I mean, it's fun to play around, but use it as a simulator to learn on. And again, there are other ones you can uh, download and buy. So, but this this works pretty good. It's a nice. I'll teach you what you need to know, the basics of it at least. Bring it back down here. Oh, I crashed. And when you crash, just hit I, and that'll reset your model for you. And that's how you use the FMS simulator for this one. And it works pretty good. I'm like, it's nice because you don't have any batteries or anything like that. It's all USB. I mean, you can unplug it and plug it as you need it. That's really, really nice and handy. So, pick it up. Okay, one other thing I want to tell you about. Uh, the throttle stick on this thing has a ratchet on it, a little ratchet action, and it's just really, really annoying. Uh, you get a nice transmitter, they don't have ratchet action on them. And all my other ones, I've actually gone through and taken that out. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same to this. And to do so, it's really simple. On the back, you got four screws. You got two down here, two up here. Go ahead and take those screws out. And you don't have to worry about because there's nothing connected to this piece. Uh, the same procedure is used on all the on these two also, but the big exception is you have a bunch of wires connected to this, so you can't pull it apart very far. You can only pull it apart like that far. But simulated nothing connected to this. Go ahead. And what we are looking at, the throttle stick is right here, and here's this ratchet thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, unscrew it, flip it over. And I'll no more ratchet action. And what you do is you bend it down to give you a, a little bit of uh, resistance on the throttle stick because you don't want it just to be really, really loose. So again, after you flip it over, just bend it down. That'll give you the resistance you need, and then you can put it back together. And then you got a nice smooth throttle stick.